top of the morning to you, Dublin. We are here seeking our forever home. Does anyone have a spare castle or a cozy cottage? We've come to the Emerald Isle in beautiful Ireland, ready to river dance our way through our requirement checklist and Scout Dublin is a place to call home. Known for its rich history, vibrant culture, and friendly locals, this green city offers a unique experience where history meets modern vibrancy and a diverse food and exceptional beer find their way into your heart and stomach. Oh, and did we mention everybody speaks English? Well, sort of. I'm gonna let you know why this divorce is pretty hard for people, isn't it? I've got robots. Get together and separate. I have a big fan of marriage, but I use marriage. If you're new here, we are Diana and Guillermo. We retired early from the U.S. in 2018 to travel the world in search of our forever home. We share our experiences, tips, and the realities of life abroad in hopes to inspire your own travels. Join us as we explore Dublin's amazing architecture, charming cobbled streets, dance to the lively tunes of the pubs, and immerse ourselves in the rich culture that made us ask, could Dublin be our forever home? Stick around to find out, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be a part of our quest. Let the exploration begin. Happy New Year, Travel Bugs. This is our first video for 2024, and we want to say a special thanks to all our viewers because we hit 10,000 subscribers in January. This made the beginning of our year very special. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching and subscribing. We really appreciate all the support and love reading all of your comments. We'll respond to all of them. So please let us know any questions you have, things you want to know, cities that you'd like us to consider, or just tell us your story. We love to hear from you. And now, off to Dublin. We love mid-morning departures. It gives us the extra time to walk Buddy and Che before taking them to their sitter. Packing us a breeze, and we're off to the Lisbon Airport. We never considered Dublin as an option to live. We mostly considered less expensive and sunnier places. We did a little research and soon realized there are many enticing reasons to consider Dublin as a possible home. We have to test it ourselves, so with our requirement checklist on hand, we hit the ground running and we're off to Dublin. If you're a first time viewer of our channel, here's what our Paradise Requirement Checklist looks like. We break it down in more detail in the description below, so don't forget to check it out and compare it to your own list. Dublin is the capital and largest city of Ireland. It is located on the east coast at the mouth of the River Liffey. Dublin City and its suburbs has a population of almost 1.3 million. The Greater Dublin area has over 2 million inhabitants, accounting for roughly 40% of the Republic of Ireland's total population. One third are under the age of 25, making it the youngest population in Europe. The city's proximity to the Irish Sea makes it an important transportation hub and a gateway to Europe. Although Ireland has two official languages, English and Irish, 100% of Dubliners speak English, but all government information and road signage is written in both languages. made it to Dublin, and over 20 million passengers pass through Dublin Airport each year, making it one of the busiest airports in Europe. 
and serves as a base for the national carrier Aer Lingus and Ryanair that meets the Venom. It's located about six miles north of Dublin city center. And you can take a bus or a taxi or a rental car. Today, we're gonna try out a taxi. The least expensive option to and from the airport is the Dublin Express, a premium quality bus that coaches to 15 plus conveniently located stops near Dublin city center. I wish we knew that before. We ended up paying so much for our cab, but we did use it on the way back home. It is super comfortable and we highly recommend it if you're going to or away from the airport. We stayed in the heart of the city at the Zanzibar Lock Hotel. Their off-peak season rates are 103 euros a night, but since we were there right in the middle of June, we paid 242 euros a night. A little more than what we're used to paying, but worth it because we're walking distance to everything. You may be wondering if Uber or Bolt exist in Dublin. Yes and no. You actually cannot hire private vehicles in Ireland. When you use Uber, you will be picked up by a regular taxi and you may wait a while. Taxis have become widespread in Ireland and the industry has been heavily regulated with a strong union that is tough with new competition in the market. The preferred apps used by taxi drivers and locals are Bolt and Freenow. We are familiar with both. Beware, you may be charged a small fee for using the app and with the amount of cabs around, you can always rely on the good old hand wave to save you a couple of bucks. Taxi! Dublin offers many other forms of transportation to help residents and visitors navigate the city. There is no subway or underground system in Dublin. We read it'd be expensive and it could disrupt the city for the next 10 years. But Dubliners don't seem to be missing one. The city provides an extensive network of buses, trams, trains, and of course more taxis to facilitate transportation within and around the city. The DART is the city's commuter train that connects Dublin to surrounding cities and towns. They run every 10 minutes from Monday to Friday. The city's light rail system, the LUAS, has two lines that service 67 stations around the city. They run every five to 10 minutes. The Dublin bus has a ton of stops connecting the entire city. It's the best way to explore Dublin and the least expensive at about two euros. You can usually catch a bus as early as 5 a.m. and as late as midnight. The Leap Card is the key to all of Dublin's transport system. It's a prepaid travel card, and it's the simplest and most cost-effective way to use Dublin's public transport services. You can buy it at a ticket vending machine in many rail stations and top it up using their app. When it comes to exploring Dublin, the city offers a great walkability factor. Its compact size invites you to explore numerous attractions on foot, allowing you to soak in the charm of its cobbled streets and historic landmarks. There's plenty of storefronts, pubs, restaurants, and parks all within walking distance. The design of the city is rooted in medieval town plans where walking and travel by horse and cart were the primary modes of transportation. And this historical foundation contributes to Dublin's walkability today. Dublin is actually really nice to us because it is flat. Unlike Lisbon, we're surrounded by hills and it's 
So if you're feeling to walk around, not puffing and puffing, <laughs> like you're doing Lisbon, there's a lot of flatness here, a lot of bike riding. And it would be good for our dog, our older dog Chase, since as he gets older, the hills from Lisbon are affecting him and I know there's more. So this is nice. We actually walk a lot because it's easy. Flat terrain is definitely a plus. And if you're thinking it is perfect for bike riding, well, think again. There are bike lanes around the city, but the infrastructure isn't all there yet. Many are shared with buses, and these big boys never seem to slow down. The amount of pedestrians to avoid is quite high. And remember, the Irish drive on the left-hand side of the road. We notice many segregated bike lanes are under construction across Dublin, with plans to deliver almost 90 more miles of the network by 2027. Until then, riding a bike wouldn't be my first option. But as an overall walkability, Dublin does not disappoint. We had a pretty long list of things to do, but we had to eat lunch first. We headed across the River Leafy over the Happeny Bridge, a pedestrian bridge built way back in 1816. And just around the corner, we found the Old Mill Restaurant. If you want a true Irish lamb shank, this is the place. It was delicious. Oh, that's money. That is money. We were just 15 minutes away from the epic Irish Emigration Museum. It focuses on the story of the Irish migration exploring the history and impact of Irish immigrants around the world. The museum uses interactive exhibits, audiovisual displays, and personal stories to convey the experiences of the Irish abroad, covering aspects such as migration, influence, and achievements. Just across the street, we rush to tour the Jeannie Johnston, a replica of the ship that transported thousands of Irish immigrants during 16 journeys across the Atlantic to North America during the Great Famine. The Great Famine in Ireland was a tragic period marked by a devastating potato blight that decimated the country's main food source, the potato. It led to a widespread famine and a significant loss of life. Ireland experienced a severe and substantial population decline due to starvation, disease, and immigration. The tour tells the story of the ship, its owner, crew, and passengers. Unlike the infamous coffin ships of the time, the Jeannie Johnston never lost a passenger to disease or to the sea. When you think of Ireland, you immediately think green. Green beer, leprechauns, and four-leaf clovers. 
But the reason is actually the country's climate and frequent rainfall that provides the lushest grass areas throughout. Dublin is the third greenest capital in Europe, and we can't argue with that. If you're looking for a break from the bustling city and just a 15 minute walk from the cathedral, you'll find the calm and serenity of St. Stephen's Green, or the Green, as it's commonly known among locals. Or if you venture out towards the river, the Dublin Castle Gardens are simply gorgeous. The older we get, the more we realize how important green spaces are for our mental and physical well-being. I would spend hours sitting around appreciating nature but then the nerd in me lures me toward the Chester Beatty Library. This historic museum houses an extensive collection of manuscripts, books, artworks, and rare artifacts from diverse cultures spanning the Middle East, North Africa, and beyond. They all belonged to Sir Alfred Chester Beatty, mining magnate, philanthropist, and collector, born in New York, naturalized British, but lived the rest of his life in Dublin. The library was established in 1950 and left in a trust on behalf of the people of Ireland. It is the only Irish institution ever to win the European Museum of the Year Award in 2002. If you are a book or history fan like me, this is a must-see collection. And it's free. St. Patrick's Cathedral is another iconic site in Dublin. It is the largest cathedral in Ireland and has a rich history dating back to the 12th century. Visitors can admire the stunning architecture, learn about the cathedral's heritage, and attend services or concerts held there. We headed to Trinity College, home of the famous Book of Kells, an illuminated manuscript dating back to the ninth century. But unfortunately, we couldn't get in because we didn't get tickets in advance. They were sold out that day and you must schedule your visit online. It was disappointing, but we did get to walk the college grounds and see the graduates, which was really nice. And of course, we saved an entire day for these next activities. This is what we've been dreading and looking forward to since booking our trip. You can't come to Ireland without experiencing their famous whiskeys. 
is absolutely a must do to taste the different types of what the Irish call water of life, or in Gaelic, Ishkabaha. So are you ready for some whiskey, Diane? Oh, I've never really liked it a lot. But we're gonna have to develop the taste buds for it on this trip. And what's the best way to acquire the taste? You do three tastings. Whiskey tasting, here we come. Yep, we're visiting three distilleries around Dublin today. And we never, I mean never, drink whiskey. But we're gonna do it in the hopes of acquiring the taste after trying a few sips. The first place to check out is the Irish Whiskey Museum. Located on Grafton Street, it offers a comprehensive exploration of Irish whiskey's history and significance in Ireland's past. The guided tour is fun and theatrical, and of course you finish by tasting three Irish whiskeys. Did try the first tasting. Can't say I like it still, but the Busker whiskey was pretty decent. But overall, three tastings, one down, two to go. At the Teeling Distillery, open since 2015, you get to see the whiskey making process and enjoy tastings of their small batch whiskey and a handcrafted seasonal whiskey cocktail that was delicious. The final distillery and last hope to find a whiskey that we could bear is just off of Smithfield Square, the Jameson's Distillery Bow Street. It's a historical landmark that has been open for nearly 200 years. It's said to be the best distillery in Dublin, and we could not agree more. The history and whiskey making process presentation was excellent. We got to touch, smell, and taste Jameson's whiskey. And we definitely can say it was the smoothest taste of all. We even learned the difference between the Scottish and Irish spelling of whiskey. Whiskey, with no E, refers to Scottish, Canadian, or Japanese grain spirits. Whiskey, with an E, refers to grain spirits distilled in Ireland and the United States. During the 1860s, the Scottish had opted to blend their whiskey by mixing malt and grain spirit that cost them a fraction of the price compared to the style of their Irish counterparts. The Irish, in response, claimed such blends cannot be whiskey, and it ought not to be sold under that name. Well, a 1908 report by the Royal Commission on Whiskey and Other Potable Spirits concluded that they could. So in the years that followed, several Irish distillers hit on the marketing idea of using the old Northern Irish spelling to differentiate themselves from the increasingly common, and as far as they were concerned, inferior Scottish competition. So with that, our whiskey experience turned out to be a lot of fun and unanimously, Jameson was our favorite. Can we say we'll foresee more good Irish whiskey in our future? No, but we highly recommend the Jameson Distillery Tour to learn so much about this famous fair. And if you fancy more alcohol and want a taste of true Irish tradition, then why not go to the oldest pub in Dublin, the Brazen Head. Claims to date back to 1198. Although there are no records that can support that claim, it sure feels that old.
and no visit to Dublin is complete without experiencing the lively atmosphere of Temple Bar. This vibrant neighborhood is renowned for its pubs, live music, and cultural events. Enjoy traditional Irish music sessions, mingle with friendly locals, and savor a pint of Guinness, or two, or three, or four, in one of the many charming pubs, including the neighborhood's namesake, Temple Bar Pub, which dates back nearly 200 years. Try to catch a comedy show too, Dubliners are very friendly and funny, if you can understand what they're saying. Oh, like that, I know what they're saying, that's an Irish record, someone's gonna get it. Anyway, do you have any Irish in the room? No. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that's my list, it goes like Liverpool and like an Irish people. <laughs> but the worst, they never tip. <laughs> Finally, to end all the fun things to do with a golden seal, what's better than seeing one of your favorite bands perform in Dublin in front of a castle? This is a popular venue for summer concerts, only 30 minutes from Dublin. How's it going out in Dublin? Oh yes, we got to see the Peshmo live on the grounds of Malahai Castle with a few of our expat friends from Lisbon. We had an absolute awesome time. There is so much more to do in Dublin. We have links to all the activities we did in the video description below. Let us know what your favorite activity is in Dublin, or if you're planning a trip there, what are you most looking forward to do? If you're enjoying this content, hit the like button and subscribe to see more. It really helps our channel and we appreciate it. Yeah, you're lucky. Yes, very lucky. Yeah, I'm really lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Usually we have a ring near the every day. Yeah. Really? Every day, yeah. yeah because everyday. people say that and I'm like, yeah. does it really do that? So it, it does. Though. Yeah. yeah we... Is it quick though or does it rain like all day long? Quick. It's, it's very quick. quick. Yeah. Many, many, many rather all day long. It's a quick lick. But this minute, last minute, next minute stop. But always a ring. We've been lucky that it's been sunny and dry during our visit in June, but based on our research, we know it's cool and rainy almost 200 days of the year. We had maybe an hour or two where it was a drizzling one day and that's it. But we've been told, always carry your umbrella or a light raincoat in case of unexpected showers. Well, we'll keep this one short. There are plenty of sandy beaches near Dublin. The closest and most popular are Dolly Mount Strand and Sandy Mount. We didn't get a chance to go to the beach on this trip, but our research tells us the average annual sea temperature in Dublin is 53 degrees Fahrenheit. That water is even colder than Lisbon. Although it's nice to take strolls and run with the dogs, the few sunny days of the year and the cold water are just not the combination that we're looking for. Dublin is known to be relatively expensive especially when it comes to housing, rent prices, and dining out. In fact, it's among the top 50 most expensive cities in the world and even competes with Paris, Sweden, and London. With estimated monthly expenses at almost $6,000 a month, the cost of living in Dublin is less expensive than our hometown in the DC metro area, 
but still much higher than our current home base in Lisbon. Not surprisingly, the cost of living in our old home base of Guadalajara was 50% lower than what it would be in Dublin. Just to give you a better idea of how much we spend on some of our favorite meals in Dublin, prices are pretty much on par with the U.S. And we learn an interesting fact. We try not to eat much beef nowadays, but it's worth mentioning, over 80% of all Irish beef is grass-fed and pasture-raised. This allows for any beef product to be fully traceable from farm to fork. Remember when we said how the rain makes everything luscious green in Ireland? Well, here's another reason. Ireland has some of the best pastures globally, making Irish beef one of the best in the world. Oh. That's a burger. Wow. Quality of life in Ireland consistently ranks strong. This is largely thanks to Ireland's high levels of life expectancy, education, and income. Economic improvements in the 1990s and low business taxes have attracted a number of global pharmaceutical, information, and communications technology companies to headquarter in the city and greater Dublin areas. This is good but it also contributes to a higher cost of living, and with inflation on the rise, high prices don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. A high cost of living area is definitely not in our plans. Overall, standards of health care in Ireland are very high. Their health care system ranks 23rd in the world. The Irish public health care system is funded through taxation and is open to all legal residents. How much you pay for medical appointments depends on the category of care you are enrolled in. Approximately 37% of the population has access to entirely free public service. All doctor visits, hospital care, tests, and medication is free. The problem with a public health system is that it often takes months before getting appointments to see specialists or even schedule simple ultrasounds, for example. Private health care in Ireland means shorter waiting times and private rooms. To access private health care, you will need insurance and there are several good options for foreigners that want to live in Dublin. Ireland is generally considered a safe place to visit and live. We've talked with a number of locals and with a lot of taxi drivers who say that they have no fear at all, love living in the city, and it's known for its friendly and helpful locals always ready to lend a hand. And the Global Peace Index ranks Ireland as the third safest country in the world. Dublin benefits from a well-established police force and has a relatively low crime rate compared to many other major cities and even with all the late night partying, we never felt uneasy about safety and everyone behaved safely. Considering Dublin, Ireland as an option to live in, 
we have to know if we could actually obtain residency to live there. As U.S. citizens, we can visit for up to 90 days without a visa. But we need to apply for one if staying longer and disclose our purpose of living in Ireland. As retirees, the long stay D visa is likely what we would choose. However, it's advisable to consult with the nearest Irish embassy or consulate to ensure you choose the most suitable visa type based on your specific situation. Although we didn't get a chance to visit many Dublin neighborhoods on this trip, the ones that stood out the most in our research had diverse living experiences suitable for families and retirees alike. Starting with the trendy vibe of Stony Batter, dubbed as the world's coolest neighborhoods in the world and very close to the Jameson Distillery. Many homes have been restored and renovated in recent years, giving Stony Batter a mix of old world charm and modern flair. Portobello caters to hipster culture. It has a strong sense of community with many local events and festivals throughout the year. It's a great option for both families and young professionals with plenty of parks and green spaces to enjoy. The Grand Canal Dock is the modern part of Dublin and home to the tech industry. Located in the Dublin's Docklands, this rejuvenated area offers a vibrant atmosphere. Houses for sale go fast, as well as rentals, due to the high-tech companies in Dublin. Dundrum stands out for affordability and family friendliness. It's 30 minutes south of downtown by bus or car, and it's one of the most affordable districts in Dublin. In the historical Clontarf neighborhood, there are many beautiful houses, large enough for any expat who wants a garden, parking, and privacy. We got to spend a night at the nearby Clontarf Castle dating from the 12th century. Although home prices seem affordable, when you see the size you get for what you pay, it is pretty outrageous. The price per square meter inside the city center is 7,200 euros, and outside the city center, it's nearly 5,200 euros. That is way more than we want to spend. Dublin has fascinating history. The city is vibrant and the diverse neighborhoods have something for everyone. We really enjoy the atmosphere. The Irish are just the friendliest people all over the world. Even when we're in Spain having some drinks, an Irish couple sitting next to us struck up a conversation and it turns out the lady is a singer who happened to perform for the US President Joe Biden during St. Patrick's Day in March of 2023. Across the threshold of that Isle of Hope and Tears. We will always have room in our hearts for Dublin. We plan on coming back to explore the landscapes of Ireland, something they're really known for. But with meeting only six of ten requirements on our checklist, Dublin would not be our choice to live in forever. It sure will be a fun getaway, though. Would you choose Dublin to be your home? Comment below, and if this video was helpful to you, a like and subscribe would really mean a lot to us. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.